Hey guys, so we're gonna get started on installing this Smitty Build uh, interior liner for your Jeep JLU. Uh, the re reason why I purchased this was because typically I use a you know moving blanket or something like that to kind of lay down in the back just to protect my vehicle, the interior from any scratches or dirt and dust and grime that's gonna accumulate from you know me throwing my golf bag in there, my um, backpacking, hiking, you know boots, fishing, all that kind of stuff. In the back of my vehicle and I was realizing that it really wasn't doing the job so I needed something that would cover the sides you know the plastic and everything just because I want to keep the vehicle nice and something that would also help me in you know having ease of cleaning it out you know vacuuming would be easier so um, I went and bought this Smitty Belt uh, liner it was relatively inexpensive and you know compared to some other options um, and yeah we'll get started on it basically one little caveat to this is my jeep um 2020 jlu does not have it's not a rubicon um, or a sahara it doesn't have that flap between the um trunk and the uh, back passenger seats so it's just that as you can see that exposed area but that shouldn't make a difference with this liner um, I'll show you how I put it in and you know some little steps to take basically we're gonna be following the instructions and you can See, you know, just some closer detail to what's gonna be going on. I'm gonna give you a quick unboxing of it. So just start by removing everything just Slide right out Inside We have the instructions and then we have The liner itself and that's all that's in the bag it feels like it's good material, you know? It feels like it's, as advertised, would be, you know, water resistant and, um, you know, splash resistant, stuff like that. I can feel the other side of it is a kind of uh, rubber material, like thin rubber material, so that's gonna help with the water. Um, looks like everything is stitched well, and yeah, so we'll see, uh, we'll go to the garage and see what's going on with that. Um, like we said, in this little package, it is just the instructions and they look pretty they look pretty detailed which is good you know color photos so that's always nice with steps with words not hieroglyphs that you have to interpret that's that's really nice so yeah we'll uh start on that and then just a warning if you're misusing anything uh it's like Velcro, I'm sure, for the inside of the vehicle, and then, like I said, the adhesion. Some extra things that you want to, um, you know, bring down for the installation that the instructions said you would need is some isopropyl alcohol. Um, that'll be for when you put the adhesive for the Velcro backing uh, on your vehicle. And then it also said you would need a wooden spatula, and that's for jamming some of the uh, liner into, you know, the wedge of the car. Um, but other than that, I, was, I would also just get like a shop towel or some paper towels, you know, just to wipe off the isopropyl alcohol or rub it in. Um, and that's about it. So yeah, we'll get started. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, when you get your liner, um, you know, go inside your vehicle and put down the back seats, um, all three, um, put them all the way down and then unfold your liner. And it says just to lay it out flat, um, you know, in the back of the car. You can tell which side's gonna be which because the little holes for the rings are gonna be, you know, where the trunk should be. So you can just kind of, with some common sense, line that up. Um, so this through. Everything is partially already Velcro. All right, at this point, you can see everything is, uh, you know, laid out. The flap extends over the bumper. You're gonna find, the instructions say, find these little uh, D-ring holes and that, uh, locate the D-rings from underneath. And they should all line up and pop through, so do that on both sides. One other thing I wanna show you real quick, which is uh, I do have a little uh, cargo liner already for my vehicle, it's just a thin rubber one. Um, it has the holes for the D-rings in it, so um, I'll show you that you can do this with, you know, a rubber liner already installed. All right, now if you can see it, because everything kind of folds over, I found the 
three um, D-rings on this side and the three D-rings on this side. Once you find one D-ring, it gets relatively easy to find the rest of them because all the holes line up perfectly. All you gotta do is reach through and find them. Um, that's one comment about the construction of this liner is that it is to spec, like it fits your vehicle very well. All right, now the next step is to take the sides of the rear and uh, pull up along the side of the body and disconnect these Velcros and just put it around the roll bar and Velcro it back up on both sides. Okay, so now that you can see the two sides are um, up and connected, it's really starting to come together. Uh, the next step says that you'll take the uh, front section and fold it up and connect it to both of the headrests. All right, just so you can have a closer view of the side panels, it just goes up and Velcros around the back side right there on both sides. It's kind of dark in here, but at least you get an idea of what it looks like. Fits pretty snug and we'll start, like I said, on uh, flipping that flap up and connecting it to the back of the two. All right, so as you can see, I already have one side done, just because I want to make sure I was doing it right before I videoed it. But basically, this panel over here folds out to the side and this goes up, take this Velcro strap around the headrest and attach it to the Velcro strip um, second from the end right there. You'll have a little bit of tag end, but you know, they leave that just so you have a little extra wiggle room with uh, securing it down. Okay, so the next step is to take these rear door covers right here and just fold them in. Line it up with the Velcro right here. Make sure everything's flush. And then do that on the other side. Okay, and before you move on to the next step, just make sure the seat belts pass through this little divide right here. It's like this. Uh, only piece on this that's actually like a hard plastic just kind of tucks back through and conforms to the body of the uh, vehicle. And this can pull up top. And this will all start to really line up once you get the rest of this tucked in. So we'll move on to the next step. Okay, and so for this next step, you're gonna be tucking this plastic beaded, there's like this plastic tube running across the uh, top portion of this, and you wanna tuck it in between the plastic here and the metal frame, so right in there. And this only extends to about halfway to where then it just goes to uh, the, you know, kind of carpeting of the vehicle. Um, but this is where you bring your trusty spatula into the game and use it to tuck it in place. So I'm gonna start it just by hand. And then use the spatula. It's really, sorry, it's a little dark in here. I'm trying to do this free hanks. It's kind of awkward. Basically, okay, so it's kind of hard to show you, but basically wedge this in between those two pieces all the way across and down, um, all the way through that side. Do it on both sides and this step will be complete. This should be pretty flush now. Okay, so you can see now that I've done it, it's a little easier to see. You tuck that in between those two layers, going all the way across. You have a little piece extending out there, but I think that just kind of tucks down and in on the other side. I mean, you know, kind of just further down. Um, but yeah, that's what it should look like, and it should be pretty flush. Okay, so the next step is to find and locate the Velcro uh, near the tailgate on both sides, which is this little strip right here. And this step requires you to attach the, the hook section of the Velcro on your uh, the plastic of your vehicle, and this is where it will go. They supply you with uh, this Velcro strip right here, the hook ends, um, but make sure you have some scissors so you can cut it in half. Once you have your two ends cut, I'm just gonna take one and apply it directly to the Velcro. And it actually is perfect 
for that measurement of Velcro. And now I can see that it should be going right there. What I'm gonna do is uh, treat this area with isopropyl alcohol um, just to get off any residue because you know I do use armor all in the plastic and that's residue that will uh, interfere with the adhesion. So the first thing we'll do is Spray down this area with some isopropyl. You can just rub it on. You don't have a little sprayer. And then... So once you let that area dry, um, you'll take this little tube, which actually isn't in the instructions. The instructions say just rub down without rubbing alcohol and you know peel, stick, adhere, and then it actually tells you not to um, connect the two Velcro pieces for 24 hours so that we can adhere properly but they randomly just include this um, K520 primer adhesion promoter. Um, it gives some vague instructions on how to use it. Surface treatment, first cleaned with an appropriate solvent IPA. Uh, I just use, I guess, alcohol, uh, primer coating, coat with a clean felt brush. The amount of primer containing vary depending on the material, service condition, drying time, 60 seconds. Tape attachment, apply the double coated tape to the primer coated surface and you just you put pressure on it uh, with your hand or a roller and that's about it. So I guess we'll try this stuff. Um, open it up, obviously it's cap but it's got the point so open it up with that and I'm gonna use that kind of stinks I'm gonna I'm gonna use this uh, end of the rag kind of smells like glue oh, wow that really shot out and it's kind of like an alcohol it looks like it smells like paint thinner rub it on I'm sure it's just getting off and cleaning all of the entire surface. I'm gonna do that on both sides, let it dry for 60 seconds, and then we'll adhere the tape. All right, so it's been about 60 seconds. Uh, make sure that you, again, line this up exactly how you want it. Even if that means readjusting a few things. Because I want this line to be flush with the bottom of the vehicle. You can see it's kind of tugging a little bit. There we go. I actually needed to bring it farther back. Okay, so you can see that actually I readjusted the uh, liner so it actually fits appropriately. And um, I, you know, reused the primer just to make sure that it's in the, uh, you know, correct spot this time. And now that it's dried, I will remove this adhesive or the tape backing and I'll place it vehicle and firmly press down just so it adheres properly and make sure you put some pressure on it for a while do that on both sides and you'll be good for this step on this side it's a little sign will be you want to line it up right up with this crease right here and you'll be able to tell because your 12 volt DC will be right there so just make sure everything lines up, you know, use some uh, visual cues to do so, and you'll be all set. Okay, so now you'll fold up the um, bumper, you know, the bumper extension that goes out. So you'll just fold that Velcro section up. It's right there. Make it nice and flush, and you'll be good to go. One thing I can already tell is I wish that would fold under and not over because as I'm pulling things out of the vehicle, I feel like it's going to, you know, interrupt with that uh, crease and it would look a lot more clean if it was tucked underneath. So basically at this point, we're already done. Um, there's the two options, you know, the full cover or just the cargo area only for the liner. Um, if you want to use the full cover option, the only thing you really need to do is fold these Velcro these door liners and Velcro them up to this section here and Velcro this to there on both sides and you're good to go. 
So basically at this point, once you fold up those sides in Velcro, you have complete coverage of your vehicle. I've only done one side, obviously, but um, you know that's the full cover option, the cargo area only option. I'll show you right now how to you know convert that. Okay, so to convert it into the cargo area only, um, you can see that one side's already down and folded, but you take these door liners and Velcro them on both sides. Take it and line it up with this Velcro right here. We'll kind of fold over like that. And then you'll do your headrest on both sides. And once you undo your headrest on both sides, you basically will take this and line it up with this middle portion right here, Velcro. These sides will also Velcro, just to keep everything nice and tight. Do that on both sides. And with this extra, make sure you hook that back underneath with the original where it was originally velcroed. Make everything flush and then lift the seats. Okay, and now you'll see that um, once you lift those back seats up, it'll basically just be folded forward. You're gonna take these, which are your new headrest straps and connect them in the same way that you did uh, for the front ones. Okay, so once you um, connect that back portion of the back seats just by taking that loop around and Velcroing it, just like you did on the front seats, uh, you'll be set to go. For a close-up kind of look at everything, um, you can see that the flap just kind of hangs down. It's Velcroed in the center right there, but that's about it. It's still pretty loose. I mean, it's not a terrible look. It's, you know, a cargo liner, so it's, you know, just there to protect your vehicle. Um, you can see that it protects everything up and around the top, back of the seats, this top side over here, part of the tub and all the way underneath. Um, so this does look like a water resistant material, but because of these holes, you know, you might get, um, you know, leakage and debris through there, which you'll eventually need to, you know, vacuum out um, or, you know, let dry. So don't be, you know, overly um, abusive, you know, into, you know, your trunk cargo area. Um, you can see that some of the features, it's got their logo, Molly webbing, you know, a little port for the 12 volt DC. On the other side, it has the uh, Molly webbing as well. And everything looks pretty flush compared to how I saw it in a few descriptions. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So, you know, I'll give it some use and, you know, I'll put it in the description of how it's working and how it's holding up. Um, I'll update it there. If you have any questions, you know, please leave comments, uh, like, and subscribe. And uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully this was a helpful review for all of you that are looking into a liner for your Jeep JLU. So I've had this for a little bit and um, loving it so far. Just kind of one thing I want to show you guys is that with the trunk liner down, you can still access a lot of your stuff in here, um, you know, just by lifting the flap up. It doesn't, you know, prohibit you from, you know, opening this flap. So you can, it doesn't lift all the way up because it'll still catch on the side of the Velcro, but you can still access everything. You know, get your nuts and bolts out for your hard top and um, all those in the doors. But uh, yes, yeah, so there's that. And then we'll show you the, um, you know, split between the seats. Yeah, you can keep like, letting it record. That's fine. And you can see when um, you're gonna take one seat down, you have to Velcro this off, this up, and then just in part. So it has that split, and then this still can fold back down on itself. And then this seat 
sheet comes all the way down and just remains split like that. You can see that it still, this kind of hangs, you know, a little bit loosely, but it still allows for you at least to do the split uh, C configuration if you need to.